All right, so chicken. All right. Um, two birds here. Uh, this is a three and a half pounder. This is a four and a half pounder, just so you guys can see the difference. Uh, but when you're looking at them, I don't know if you can see in the, in the, the camera, um, but there's about a six day difference between these two birds. Uh, this one's nice, bright and pink, all right? Uh, one telltale sign that it's nice and fresh, all right? This one, the wingtips are starting to turn brown or black. Um, so another sign that we're kind of um, aging a little bit. So we're just gonna do a quick breakdown um, <clears throat> with the, the way that meat prices are right now, uh, you know, with the, the threat of the shutdown. Um, <clears throat> Super economical to go with the whole bird, uh, break it down and, and use all the pieces and then use the bone for stock, all right? Um, with our fried chicken and waffles, uh, typically I wouldn't fry the breasts. I would save those for something else, but uh, we're gonna go all in. Um, so when we look at the bird, uh, a few different things we're looking at to make sure it's fresh, all right? So we talked about the wing tips. We're gonna look inside kind of like the armpit uh, and inside of the elbow uh, to see if there's any discoloration, um, no kind of sliminess to it, uh, no odor. When you push back on the flesh, it bounces back just like the, um, um, uh, the red snapper that we did a few weeks back, all right? Uh, all good signs. Uh, trying to tell the difference of a grade A bird, looking to see if there's any feathers. Uh, a couple feathers still on here, not really a big deal. Um, so I think we're, we're good to go ahead and, and move forward with the fabrication of this bird. All right, uh, so the way I have my setup here, uh, I've got a parking line sheet pan for all my pieces and fat. The fat we can save and freeze, and then further down the line we can grind it uh, and use it in sausage or what have you. Um, stock pot here, so we'll make some, some fresh chicken stock. All right, uh, so we'll blanch the bones. So we'll take all the bones, put them in there, cover them with cold water, bring it up to a simmer, uh, and that's gonna have all that white stuff float up to the top called scum, all right? Uh, we'll skim that off. That's all the kind of the impurities and stuff inside of the bones. Um, get rid of that, dump the water, refill with cold water, bring it back up to a simmer, uh, and we'll get a nice clear stock that way. All right, uh, but with our bird, all right, the first thing I like to do, uh, especially when it, when it comes to competition birds, is to remove the wishbone, all right? Uh, there's a lot of meat hidden behind that wishbone, so if we try to fabric uh, without taking that off, you're gonna leave a lot of meat behind uh, and at doxy points, all right? Uh, so just going in the neck, we'll kind of score quickly and then rub the knife along the bone. Uh, a bony knife has a little bit of flex to the blade, all right, so that it can hug up against the side of the bones as we go through, all right? We'll continue to carve up, all right? And you go right to the top of the, kind of like the collarbone, the center of the collarbone, and you'll feel a flat kind of part where it's perfect to pinch, where you can pinch and then peel it back. All right. And then remove it. All right. So wishbone in one piece into the stock bin. All right. Now we're good to go. All right. Go ahead and move forward. Uh, there's some extra skin and fat in here, which I'll remove just so you can kind of see what we're working with. All right. And now our birds kind of dance on the, on the bench a little bit. So the, the way to kind of remedy that is if you cut between the thigh and the breast, and if you put your middle finger along the thigh bone, you can pop it up and kind of dislocate that hip joint. What that's gonna do is gonna create, or uh, the, it's gonna make, make your bird a lot more stable on the, on the cutting board, all right? Um, so now we'll, we'll go ahead and start breaking it down. Um, <clears throat> traditionally, you know, in school, I teach you how to, do, how to French it or make an airline or statler breast. Um, obviously we're gonna fry these wings, uh, so we don't need to do that, but uh, we'll do it anyways just to kind of practice, or we'll, we'll go through the process just without Frenching it just to, to practice. Um, so the breast bone down the center here, all right, we'll score a knife along it, and it's naturally gonna go to one side. This time we went to the, the right, so we'll take that one off first, all right. Hugging the knife up against the bone. All right, and peeling it back. Exposing this bone, that's what's going to lead us down to that kind of shoulder joint. All right. We'll move that. And now we've got a, a wing on chicken breast. All right, so we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to the other side of that or, uh, breast bone. Until that kind of shoulder joint is exposed right underneath the tenderloin. So I'll move that. <clears throat> All right, back these in a second. Let's finish these guys off. All right. um, so, with the breasts, right now we've got a, a wing attached um, and tenderloin attached chicken breast. So, if we, if we flip it up 
and kind of just gently pull. This tender line will kind of release itself. All right, so that's one chicken tendy. The same thing on this side. Move it. Two chicken tendies. All right. Now at this point, if we were going to, uh, to traditionally French these, what we would do is we would cut through the, um, the skin fold there, go score around the bone, pop and pull to expose that first wing joint so that when you, you know, if you were doing a pan roast or chicken breast, um, you have that bone on there for, for, for garnish or um, um, it gives it the, the dish some height uh, and also shows some skill. With this fried chicken, uh, we don't need to do that because we're going to fry the wings and make some delicious wings. So uh, we'll remove the wings. These wing tips, uh, not a lot of, or I shouldn't say not a lot of flavor, there is a lot of flavor, uh, but not a lot of meat on there. So what we're gonna do is we'll separate it in the joint and we'll use these for stock, all right? And then we'll fry this wing uh, just as is, all right? Always checking to make sure that we got all of, uh, you know, any extra cartilage or anything uh, nice and clean. All right, so we've got our skin on chicken breast. Same thing to the other side, all right? So we'll remove the wing from the breast, separate the wing tip, right through the joint all right and then just making sure there's no cartilage or anything left behind we're good all right halfway home with the legs all right if you flip it over and pull the legs together there's two little bulges in the back all right oyster mussels okay uh prize most prized possession on this entire chicken most flavorful meat on the bird uh, a few different ways you can remove them uh, the easiest way is if you open or if you pull the or separate the thigh from the the cavity a little bit uh, there's a white triangle with a little piece of meat behind it. That's the end of the oyster. So if you put your thumb on top of the oyster and scrape, kind of using your thumb to scrape along, uh, there's a little pocket that that oyster sits inside, a really smooth bone that you can use to separate and free the oyster. All right, so once it's freed, go around and remove it. And then remove the leg from the rest of the cavity. This really dark piece here is that oyster muscle. All right. um, for this fat, or for this process, uh, we'll separate the, the drum from the thigh. So if you pull the skin back a little bit, there's a white line of fat. All right, that's your road map down to the joint. So we'll score nice and gently so we can get down and expose where that, those two kind of bones come together. All right. Separate them, pull the skin nice and tight, trim off any extra fat or skin. That goes in our skin pile. All right, and with the bone, uh, with these thighs, we're actually gonna do a little bone boneless to fry them, all right? Um, so again, uh, a little white line right above the bone. It's kind of your roadmap down. So if you put a little bit of pressure and use the tip of your knife to score down to the bone, all right? You can pinch the bone, put the knife underneath, glide it up, separate, and pull down the rest of the way. One for stock. Now we've got our deboned oyster muscle attached chicken thigh. Same thing on the other side. All right, so removing the oyster muscle from the bottom of the bird. All right. Removing the leg, bones, stock. All right. Except pulling the skin back to expose that white line. We'll score down there to find our joint between our drum and our thigh. All right. And then again, white line, tip of the knife, some gentle pressure with our, our thumb and forefinger to separate the meat from the bone. Pulling down the other side, pinching underneath. All right, knife through and up. What that leaves behind all right, is our bones for stock, all right, two chicken tendies, two boneless breasts, two boneless thighs, two drumsticks, and two uh, wing sections. All right, we'll do the same thing with the smaller bird, but we'll, in a little bit of a time lapse, uh, and we'll go from there.
All right, so now it's time to make a little tubby tubby, uh, you know, bath time for these ch this chicken, okay? Uh, so as promised, our buttermilk has returned. Um, in addition to having kind of a, you know, that, 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 you know, the flavor that we liked inside of those, um, the strawberry shortcake earlier in the week, um, the acidity that's inside of here is going to be great for helping to kind of tenderize the chicken for us. All right. So uh, a decent amount of buttermilk. We've got two whole birds here. So that's four cups of buttermilk. Um, add some salt to this as well. So we're essentially making kind of like a, salt, or a buttermilk brine. Uh, so I'd say this is probably a quarter cup or so of um, uh, kosher salt, a little bit of cayenne pepper. All right, we're not going crazy here. Uh, keeping in mind what the finished product is gonna be. So this was just straight up fried chicken. Um, then I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on the cayenne, but since it's going with, you know, um, uh, the chicken and waffle steam, um, not, not quite as heavy. I do like the sweet and spicy mix, all right? So it's nice to have that in there. Uh, but we don't want to get too aggressive with it because we can always adjust a little bit in the end um, when it comes out of the fryer. Uh, some fresh ground black pepper as well. All right. And again, thinking there are what the final product is going to be. Uh, waffles, uh, maple syrup, uh, in my opinion, uh, the best thing they can go with that are one of the most complimentary things are those autumn spices that we always talk about. Uh, so cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, clove. Uh, not going all out in here, but we def definitely want some, um, some fresh allspice. So whole allspice berry actually looks kind of like an acorn um, and the, the difference between using you know or grating it fresh and getting the stuff in in the jars at the grocery store is pretty uh, you know pretty pretty catastrophic uh, if that's the right word I don't know um, but um, as soon as you start to grate it the entire kitchen smells like, like fresh nutmeg um, worth it all right so just put a little microplane uh, in our allspice all right. Sorry, also, why do I keep saying it? Did I say allspice before? Nutmeg. Alright, uh, so we'll just create some fresh nutmeg into here. Alright. Um, and the inside of it looks pretty cool too. It almost looks kind of like truffle like. Alright. Um, so that's our, our, our kind of our bath for our chicken. A little bit cook whisk. Right. As weird as it's going to be, I am going to taste it. So I'll chicken to go in here, uh, minimum of four hours. It is almost eight o'clock at night right now. Uh, so by the time we start you know, working with this tomorrow, it'll be probably four. Um, so math is hard. What's that? 12, 14, 16, 20 hours? Give it, no. <laughs> yeah, 20 hours, all right? Um, 20 hours um, hanging out inside of this bath uh, and, and hopefully, you know, working, or working its magic and we'll, we'll go from there. All right, um, so whiskey, whiskey gone. Uh, not going to do this to the chicken tendies, all right. Uh, they're so small um, uh, that uh, they were just over brine, all right. Um, so I'll save those and use them as, as lunch tomorrow or, or, you know, something like that. Um, but definitely don't want to over brine them, all right. Um, so we'll put the tendies aside. But in here we do have the drums, we have the thighs, uh, the boneless thighs, uh, the wings, and the um, skin-on uh, boneless chicken breast. We'll give it a little toss. We'll wrap this up nice and tight into the fridge. Uh, where it'll hang out and chill, uh, doing its thing, and then we'll come back and see it tomorrow. All right, so our chicken is out of its little bath. Uh, it was chilling in the buttermilk for about 20 hours, or so overnight um, to the next day. <clears throat> kind of a modification of your standard breading procedure. So your standard breading procedure would be flour, egg wash, and then some kind of crumb coating. Uh, it could be panko breadcrumbs, could be cornflakes, could be nuts, uh, you know, a variety of different things. Uh, but for what we're doing today, a little bit different. So a seasoned flour, both in the, in the one and three position. In the middle, we just have regular buttermilk. Not the same buttermilk we used last night. The buttermilk we used last night, if you remember, we put a decent amount of salt into. Um, so it's already been chilling on that salt all night. We don't want to oversalt it, all right? So it's going to go into the flour, into the buttermilk, uh, into the flour, and then into this wire rack to kind of hang out for about 20 minutes. <clears throat> Works out perfect. I just threw on our Dutch oven, all right, uh, with some fry oil in it. In a candy thermometer, we'll go over a little bit more of that in depth uh, when we get over to that stage when it comes to actually frying them. Uh, but it's going to take some time for that to heat up. All right, so it should work out really well. <clears throat> Two hands, all right, one for dry, one for wet. All right, uh, so we'll start with the breasts, wet hands into the dry flour. All right, we'll dredge. And then we'll take our dredged chicken breast and put that into the buttermilk and the wet hands. And then we'll let that drip off a little bit. 
All right. Go back into the dredge. Dry hand again for the third station. So our chicken's all dredged and kind of just hanging out, chilling, waiting for us to, to be ready. Our oil's at temp, uh, but before we start frying it, we're gonna go ahead and make our waffle batter. All right. A very simple, straightforward, easy thing to do uh, with some pretty basic ingredients. All right, so for our liquid ingredients, uh, two cups of whole milk, a uh, quarter cup, or sorry, half cup of vegetable oil, um, teaspoon of vanilla, and two egg yolks inside of here in our dry, all right. Um, two cups of all-purpose flour, a uh, teaspoon of cinnamon, uh, a tablespoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt. Um, that's all that was there. All she wrote when it comes to that. So this, uh, we're really quickly just gonna uh, whisk together. All right. Uh, again, to kind of reiterate, we did, we did the strawberry shortcake demo. Uh, by doing this whisking, we're essentially sifting it together. Not as perfect, um, but it gets the job done. All right. Three purposes: uh, to break up any clumps really well mix it and to incorporate some air all right so adding some volume to it speaking of air all right that's where our egg whites are going to come into play all right um, so our two egg whites that are left over from um, <coughs> the egg yolks that we use in the, the liquid here are going to come into play and we're going to whip them to stiff peaks all right so incorporate some air all right uh, very clean bowl. All right, a little bit of grease in there is going to be cause big problems, big headaches. All right, um, balloon whisk. All right, again, going back to the strawberry shortcake and loaf cream. I like to tip the bowl up on the edge a little bit. All right, and we'll go side to side to really agitate it and incorporate as much air as we can. Different stages they're going to go through as we're whipping right now. Kind of a frothy stage, all right? Kind of foamy, all right? Keep going. We're getting lighter in color, all right? But they're not holding peaks just yet. starting to get a little bit of machine to them, not much, but when you lift the whisk up, they sit gently on top of themselves before they fall over. All right. You want to take it further to the to stiff peak so when you lift it, it stays straight up. And It's not going to be better for it, okay? Uh, it's simply going to turn greedy and grainy and break, just like when we're making hollandaise or mayonnaise. And you add the oil too fast, or add the butter too fast, and it breaks. Um, if you add too much air to this, it's going to break. All right. So this will put aside. Uh, we're just going to mix together our egg yolk, vanilla, uh, oil, and milk. All right. We'll add that into our dry. Wet and to dry is what mixing method? That's right, the muffin method. All right. Gently whisking it in. We don't want to over mix it. All right. It's okay if it's still kind of clumpy. Uh, otherwise, we're going to get too much gluten in there and be bad news. My 
PF2 rubber spatula. And we're gonna gently fold these egg whites into our batter. All right. All right, so over and down, rotate. Lightening up the batter a little bit, being careful not to deflate the egg whites that we just worked so hard to form. All right. And there we is. All right, ready to make or start making the waffles. Uh, really wicked hot. All right, some pan spray for the top and bottom of the iron. All right, some disher. About a scoop and a half our batter. Close it up in no touch. Right. So things are escalating pretty quickly over here now. I got my, my sous chefs and my micromanagers just sitting not doing any work. They're just hanging out watching. That's okay. Uh, they're quiet at the moment so we'll move quick before they start. To, that starts to change. Waffles are rocking behind us. Right now our oil is at about 370 degrees which is right where I want it because when I add this chicken all right, it's gonna, the temperature of that oil is going to drop down. Cast iron is great at retaining the heat, but when you're putting a whole bunch of chicken in there, you know, um, it, it can only do so much. <clears throat> to reiterate what we call that, recovery time. Okay, the time it's gonna take for that oil to get back up. We want it to be around 350 degrees, so I'm guesstimating uh, that by having it at like 370-ish, um, uh, it'll be right where we need it to be, so when it drops down, uh, we can adjust to play with the heat from there, all right? So we'll do our white meat first. All right, so we got some chicken breasts. I think we'll do two at a time, all right? For the thir first 30 seconds, don't want to touch it. All right, I want to let that crust start to develop before I start to mess with it. That deep end behind me is our next round of waffles. So now that I'm making sure that it isn't going to explode and overfill on us, we'll go check on those waffles. Now it's been about 30 seconds or so. We can go in. We're going to do a little flip. And I'm watching my oil temperature very close, so I can start adjusting the temperature. All right. I'm happy with the amount of space in there, so I'm going to go ahead and put one more chicken breast in. Continuing to fry these in batches, okay? Uh, 165 is what we're looking for for poultry here. All right, the chicken breasts, probably about 15 minutes to get to that point. The thighs are a little bit less, maybe 10 to 12 minutes, and now I get some drums uh, and some wings floating. Um, the waffles are just about set, so we'll start doing some plating. All right, so now it's time to kind of bring it all together. Uh, Benny and Andrew, you're ready to rock over here with your, your world famous waffles, all right? Um, this waffle iron makes kind of waffle boats, which is kind of cool, all right? So it's kind of perfect for, for this application where it's a nice little vessel to hold our, our chicken, all right? Um, so we'll put our, our chicken thigh, buttermilk brines, fried chicken thigh in the center there, real maple syrup, none of that Mrs. Butterworth stuff, all right? There. Right. Chicken is nice and juicy. Alright. Our waffle, the eyes. All together. What's the name? Right. Food the kitchen.